log. If you need to update those images, upload a new image to a new URI and change the HTML to point to that new URI. Here's an example where we have a big image.png. And if we retrieve that image, you'll see that the cache control header has been set to a very long time. In this case, Yeah, let's listen to this, uh, I don't know his name, <laughs> so uh, to see, pick up some ideas from him. Right? So at the same time, just to relax, uh, and we are waiting for the rest. Uh, so the first video is about the concept for the rest, right? uh, it's an architecture. And the second video will show you, uh, in the real life example, uh, this, uh, what are the applications who are using, which are using this uh, RESTful web service. So just two uh, short video clips. Hi, I'm Joe Gregorio, and I work in developer relations at Google. This talk is on REST, and in the talk, I presume you're familiar with the Atom Publishing Protocol. If you're not, you can watch my other video, An Introduction to the Atom Publishing Protocol, and then come back and watch this one. So, let's begin. You may have heard the term REST, and a lot of protocols these days are advertising themselves as REST. REST comes from Roy Fielding's thesis and stands for Representational State Transfer. It's an architectural style. Now, an architectural style is an abstraction as opposed to a concrete thing. For example, this Shaker house is different from the Shaker architectural style. The architectural style of Shaker defines the attributes or characteristics you would see in a house built in that style. In the same way, the REST architectural style is a set of architectural constraints you would see in a protocol built in that style. HTTP is one such protocol. And for the remainder of this talk, we're just going to talk about HTTP. And I'll refer back to the architectural constraints of REST as we work through that example. Now, it's simply not possible to cover every aspect of HTTP. So at the end of this presentation, there'll be a further reading list if you'd like to learn more. So why should you care about REST? Well, it's the architecture of the web as it works today. And if you're going to be building applications on the web, shouldn't you be working with the architecture instead of against it? And hopefully, as you see as we go through this video, there'll be many opportunities for increasing the performance and scalability of your application and solve some traditionally tricky problems by working with HTTP and taking full advantage of its capabilities. Let's get some of the basics down, some nomenclature and the operation of HTTP. At its simplest, HTTP is a request response protocol. Your browser makes a request to the server. The web server gives you a response. The beauty of the web is that it appears very simple, as if your browser is talking directly to the server. So let's look in detail at a specific request and response. Here is a GET request to the URL http colon slash slash example.org slash news. And here's what the response looks like. It's a 200 response, and what you're seeing here are the headers and a little bit of the response body. The request is to a resource identified by a URI. In this case, http colon slash slash example.org slash news. The URI is broken down into two pieces. The path goes into the request line, and you can see the host shows up in the host header. Uh, there's a method and that's the action to perform on the resource. There are actually several different methods that can be used. Get, put, delete, head, and post, among others. Um, and each of those methods has particular characteristics about them. For example, get is safe, item potent, and cacheable. Cacheable means the response can be cached by an intermediary along the way. Item potent means the request can be done multiple times. And safe means there are no side effects from performing that action. So put is also item potent, but not safe and not cacheable. Same with delete it is item potent. Head is safe and item potent. Post has none of those characteristics. Also returned in that response was the representation of that resource, what lives at that URI. 
The representation is the body. And in this case, it was an HTML document. HTML is a form of hypertext, which means it has links to other resources. Here is a traditional link that you would click on to go to another page. But there's more than one kind of link. Here uh, is techno, uh, traditionally, the HTTP is used to transfer the HTML. Uh, when we talk about HTML, right, uh, so hyper, 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 uh, they will talk about hypertext, hypertext. Uh, then you uh, please take note the presentation they highlight this hyper means linking to other resource uh, linking to other resource in other words the HTML is just a page but this page can lead to other page or other resource so the magical power comes from this simple hypertext it means every resource is not in this case originally the page is no longer an, an island over there, but it's a, link, it's a hyperlink among all of the pages. And then you look at the Facebook uh, phenomena, every page got a human being behind. <laughs> so if all the pages will link, so possibly the human being and the social media uh, can tap on it also. Let me look a little bit. Uh, that action. So, Put is also item potent, but not safe and not cacheable. Same with delete it is item potent. Head is safe and item potent. Post has none of those characteristics. Also returned in that response was the representation of that resource, what lives at that URI. The representation is the body. And in this case, it was an HTML document. HTML is a form of hypertext, which means it has links to other resources. Here is a traditional link that you would click on to go to another page. But there's more than one kind of link. Here is a link to a CSS document that the browser will call and include to style the page. There's also other kinds of links. Here's one to a JavaScript document that will get pulled in. This is a particularly important kind of hypertext or document that's pulled in. This is called code on demand, the ability to load code into the browser and execute it on the client. The response headers show control data such as this header, which controls how long the response can be cached. So now that we've looked at a simple HTTP request and response, let's go back and look at some of the characteristics that a RESTful protocol is supposed to have. Application state and functionality are abstracted into resources. Those resources are uniquely addressable using a universal syntax for use in hypermedia links. So in the HTTP, there is a, one of the characteristics, uh, we, we, we highlight a couple of things uh, about client server request response, uh, and then uh, stateless we mention a little bit. Uh, cacheable means on the way you can, you, where you can cache the result. Uh, the best example is when, it, when the browser requests this, uh, the browser may, may, may cache this, this page for some time. Right uh, before expire, so that <coughs> if the user sitting in front of the browser requests for the new page which has not expired yet, so they will display something in the cache, and uh, instead of sending a fresh request to the server, but the cache can happen in between the client and server also in the intermediate nodes. Uh, the caching can come to this place. So uh, cacheable, uh, right? And then it is layered, uh, layer approach, uh, layer approach. So it's, it's our, our web application or mobile application consists of many layers. So uh, like uh, building blocks layer. Uh, so basically, you look at this model, client server basically sees two layers already. Uh, if you look at the client, mobile client, browser client, and then the web application, uh, the web server, followed by application server, and followed by database server, so there are many layers already. So sometimes can be multi, multi-layer, right, multi-layer. So the beauty of multi-layer is, once you change one layer, right, so the rest of the layers hopefully will not be affected. So in other words, when we build application, so when you're building uh, a web-based application, the browser, right, so you have other layers to support this browser-based application. So once we move to mobile-based mobile application, 
Uh, so we are changing one layer. So hopefully the rest of the layers uh, you can reuse. Yeah, so for example, one of the examples is we have service oriented architecture. So all of the service that the building blocks in the back end can be reused either by the requests come from normal traditional web application or the mobile application, right? Uh, so this is the layer. But I want you to pay attention to this stateless. Um, uh, I, I think uh, you look at this Google uh, presentation, uh, more or less we realize the way of we approach we learning this module, uh, more or less is the correct approach. So when we uh, look at the, when we look at the software web service, we highlight a lot about HTTP all the way HTTP from the beginning to the end. So we come to the RESTful, so you know a lot of HTTP things can be reused. And if you look, if you listen to the video, the RESTful service basically is take a full advantage of HTTP compared to stop. For example, uh, when you are requesting something, if you are requesting a resource, right? And then you see, for the resource, you want to uh, get the resource. You may like to create, uh, put, create a new resource, or you want to update the re resource, or you want to even delete the re resource. So instead of reinventing some of the things for the operation on the resource, we realize in the HTTP protocol itself, they have many different methods over there. They have a get over there for you to retrieve the resource, right? Get the resource, and then the put method uh, will be able to for you to create a new resource, right? And then the post for you to modify, and then delete to delete. So take the rest will come here to take full advantage of the existing HTTP stuff compared to the stock and. Right. Uh, just uh, pay special attention to this uh, stateless, stateless. So in other words, whenever you send a request to the server, I say, MSG, uh, last time I come here, take attendance, uh, can you remember whether I, I was late or I was absent? So if the server, say, is stateless, the server will not keep any state of the client, of, of the request. Right. Uh, so every request is a fresh request, right? It's a fresh request. It's a fresh request. So and then you know HTTP is designed the, in the first place is for this uh, web page serving the resource, which which is web page, and serving as many web pages, uh, so as serving the web page resource at the web server side to as many uh, clients uh, as possible, right? So the, the server side, the HTTP protocol itself, designed in a way called stateless. That means the server itself really kind of uh, uh, does not consume too much resource, right? Uh, for each request, no need to maintain the state, right? So that it can serve as many requests as possible at one time, right? So this is, uh, this is, uh, this is the stuff. So later on, when we come to web application, especially you need to log in, right? And then you say, oh, server, you never remember whether I'm logging in or not, right? You keep asking me to log in again, okay, right? <laughs> so web application need to handle, need to, need to take care of the state, right? Uh, like in the web application, you have a shopping cart, but you, you say, web server, last time I put a one item in the shopping cart, whatever, <laughs> HTTP server never keep the state. So in this case, your application, I need to, to hold to manage this, uh, this uh, state. Uh, so when it comes to the REST, right, REST is make full advantage of HTTP as this, uh, this gentleman, this expert said. Right? So the nature of this REST for service is stateless. So the simple answer for this is because REST for make full advantage of HTTP. Right? So HTTP is stateless, REST for is stateless. Or just simply uh, take the definition of the H why HTTP is stateless. Because the server side never keep, keep record of the state of the re request. Every request is a fresh request. So the case for RESTful service, whenever you call, right, they, they will not keep track of the state of the previous request from the same client, right, or from the same client. 
from the same kind. So the important part over here is the stateless things. Uh, last time in the practical notes, we have once, uh, one part of it talk about stateless. I think this is uh, one of the test questions we we'll ask you about this. Uh, this is an important concept uh, we, we need to be clear, right? Because the RESTful service is stateless, uh, right? And then, uh, because uh, this service, will, will, the scalability is the issue. So once your RESTful service is stateless, that means your RESTful service, your application built on this RESTful service have the potential, have the capability to scale. In other words, like a rubber band, you will be able to stretch, stretch. When you stretch means your, RESTful, your application based on RESTful service, or the stateless service, in this case, will be able to support large number of requests come from you. Yeah, come from you. Come from you. All resources share a uniform interface for transferring the state between the client and the server, consisting of a constrained set of well-defined operations, a constrained set of content types, optionally supporting code on demand, and a protocol which is client-server stateless, layered, and cacheable. Now that we've already talked about many of these aspects with HTTP, we can see that we already have resources that are identified by URIs, and those resources have a uniform interface, understanding a limited set of methods, such as get, put, post, head, and delete, and that the representations are self-identified, a constrained set of... And then in the presentation, they will always highlight this resource, resource, re resource, right? So, uh, so when, when you request HTTP request, right, what are you requesting? You are requesting a resource. And then the resource can be identified by this uniform resource identifier. So from since the first week, we, are, we, we know the resource come in the first place with the web page, the home page, JSP page, HTML page. So we are keeping asking this question. Yeah, what could be the resource over here? Right? What could be the resource over here? Right. So when you talk about RESTful service, this is the resource. Right? When you talk about soft service, this is the resource. And then they talk about smart nation, smart nation, we move to Internet of Things. Internet of Things. So this thing itself is a resource. It's a resource. Resource. So these are the basic concepts. And then the next video, just quickly show you in the uh, application. What are the applications that are making use of the REST for service? Welcome. Today I want to talk about what an API is and why it's important in web development. API stands for Application Programming Interface. And basically, it's something that allows one piece of software to talk to another. Now, there's lots of different kinds of APIs. but when you hear people talk about Twitter's API or Google's API, what they're talking about is a REST API. And a REST API stands for... So maybe it's good to start from uh, this place uh, before we look at, watch this video a little bit. So I have posted this end-to-end, uh, -end, uh, this... Uh, uh, yeah. So REST for ser service, you see this is a REST for service, uh, the, what could be the resource? In this case, the resource, in this case, refers to the tools. So in your assignment, the resource is referred to food. <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah, food. <laughs> I, maybe you call something other, other stuff, right? So we are trying to follow a uh, so-called good practice, uh, so-called, right? So because you are talking about the URL, the resource, so they have a domain name, they have a path, they have a thing, to, they mm -hmm. have tools. So this resource, they, they say you need to use, instead of use verb, you need to use a noun to indicate in the URL. So this makes sense. But when we look at around, right, so may not be, may not, not necessarily the web API we, are, we, we will use, they will follow this good practice, right, but theoretically resource URI 
resource, whatever resource could be, is a noun, right? And then whatever operation you want, you want to work on this resource is come from this HTTP uh, method. So this method in itself is a verb, right? Get put to cr get uh, put to create, right? Post to change, uh, delete to delete. So this other method operation is already built in the HTTP. So the RESTful service is basically make full advantage of uh, the so-called HTTP. Uh, so the resource. <coughs> And what does this resource tell us? Because we, we know this resource is, uh, uh, is uh, in our case, is a JSP page, right? No, no, it's Java, Java class. Uh, it's a unit Josie, Josie library, and we put some annotation so to expose the web, the methods, right, as a resource method or restful method. Behind the scene, this guy go to the database. Right, and then uh, send a secret statement over the connection and get a record set. I put the record set because the record set you cannot move, cannot move across the HTTP. The, what you move through HTTP is zero one zero is that is that is a string. So they convert to this kind of format, right? Either XML or either JSON, but in the end, it's a, it's a, it is a string, it's structured string, right? So this is how it works, right? How it works, and what does that? We took let, let, take a look at this is the, like, the API. Why? Because in your application, let's say in your mobile application, you will be able to use this web API, right, to access the resource at this URI. So this is a web API. This is the API for your mobile application or other application to invoke through the web, right? Uh, the way you book, you just say, okay, what parameters you need to pass. In this, in this case, there are parameters. <laughs> because you want to get all the tools, all the food. So no parameters. And uh, they will return this kind of JSON format for you. Uh, they say machine readable, human readable, whatever it is, but it's a string. So that they can transfer to the HTTP from this application to your application. Yeah? So uh, this is what we have done. And then, based on this, you can, you can watch the video. So in the real life, in the real life, what are the, what are the things? Welcome. Today I want to talk about what an API is and why it's important in web development. API stands for Application Programming Interface, and basically it's something that allows one piece of software to talk to another. And there's lots of different kinds of to talk to another. It's, uh, it's the different applications to communicate with each other. Or you can see kind of integration. So in our assignment, basically, uh, whether it's your swing, right? Swing client over there, or mobile client application. And this guy just now will show you this resource over there. It comes from another application, right? Uh, currently, it's hosted at localhost. In fact, it may be hosted somewhere else in the production environment. So this is kind of different applications will be able to uh, talk to each other, integrate with each other. And then if your process, <laughs> is let's say when you invoke this, actually it's part of your process. So it's kind of in your business, your business process kind of linked or integrated with another business process from your business partners. So look like two different applications talk to each other. So an another perspective is look at two different applications come from two different companies. So why you talk to each other? Because your business partners. So these web service, RESTful API or whatever soft, uh, service over there, allow different applications to be integrated to each other. So allow the, your business process to be integrated with your business partners' business process. Right, so it's, it's really well kind of integrated. Uh, in the end, it's double click, click, right? <laughs> double click, click, right? So that, that's a key thing that we're keeping talking about. The APIs, but when you hear people talk about Twitter's API or Google's API, what they're talking about is a REST API. And a REST API stands for Representational State Transfer. Now, it doesn't have to be the case, but usually a REST API works pretty much the same way a website does. You make a call from a client to a server, and you get data back over the HTTP protocol. 
Now, I think one of the best ways to show the many similarities between yeah, the so rest is similar. First, you know why? Because in the in the traditional one, what you get is HTML page. You send a request to this website, you get the resource, which is HTML. Now, what is going to do is you send an HTML request, you get this to be consumed not by human being directly, but by your application, right? Uh, so, but in the browser, we only use HTTP GET, right? So in your application, you can use uh, different methods, GET, PUT, delete, or, or, put, put, or POST, right? Yeah, so this API call and loading a normal web page can be found with Facebook's Graph API. For example, let's pull up uh, YouTube's Facebook, www.facebook.com slash YouTube. And we're all familiar with what a Facebook page looks like. It shows how many likes the YouTube page has, things like that. But now let's change the www part to graph.facebook.com slash YouTube. And what we get back is a response to our API request. We've made an API request in our browser to Facebook's Graph API. Now what we get back might appear to be gibberish to the human eye, but it's actually JavaScript object notation or JSON formatted data. It's structured data organized according to key value pairs. The same way an Excel spreadsheet is structured with key value pairs and you might ask for the data that's in cell a16, you can ask a JSON array for the data, if you want to know how many likes this Facebook page had, for the data contained under the key likes. And all modern programming languages will be able to interpret this JSON response. One more concept I want to introduce is the idea of parameters. Let's reload that same Facebook API request, but this time let's add fields equal ID, name, and likes. Now when we refresh the page, you see that only ID, name, and likes have been returned. That's because these parameters have filtered the data that we get out of this response. Now let's take a look at another API example. One that I think is really cool is provided by Google Maps, and it allows you to take a city name or even an address and turn it into a set of GPS coordinates. Eyes.com slash maps slash API slash geocode slash JSON. So if you remember what we just talked about, the server that we're calling is maps.googleapis.com. And then the particular resource we've drilled down, it's the maps resource, and then the API resource, and then the geocode resource, and we've even added JSON as a resource. And that's because the Google Maps API can return data in a number of different formats. And then we'll add the following parameters. We'll add address equals Chicago, and sensor equals false. And as you can see, we got another JSON response. And if we look in the JSON array and we go to the key results, and then the key geometry, and then the key location, we see the latitude and longitude coordinates for the city of Chicago. Now that's great and all that we got the geolocation coordinates for Chicago, but what do we do with them? Well, let's mash two APIs together and take those geo coordinates over to Instagram and plug them into Instagram's media search endpoint. So in order to access the Instagram media search endpoint without having to write any code, we're gonna head over to instagram.com slash developers, and then on the left-hand side, click on API console, and we'll be able to use this API console that's provided by APIG or Apigee in order to make requests to the Instagram API without needing to write any code. And you can see if you click on the drop down on the left, there's a whole bunch of APIs that uh, this thing is set up to allow you to play with. But for now, we're going to use Instagram, and we're going to be using the Instagram media search endpoint, which you can see is at api.instagram.com slash version1 v1 slash media slash search. And then we're going to set the following parameters. And you can see that they're added to our URL request up at the top of the screen. We're going to set lat equal to 41.87 and longitude equal to negative 87.62. And we'll set a distance of 20 meters. And we click send and we get back. So, for example, come back to your, our own web service, uh, kind of one of the services for you to search the food. Uh, sort of things, right? So, uh, what kind of resource are you talking about? So you can use something slash food, right? And they allow you to give you the parameters, right? So, and they, so what is the uh, 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 rating? What is the keywords? So these are the things. But you look at this uh, Instagram. The, their URI is a straight away you do slash slash search, right? Slash search. So, in other words, you also can design something like a slash search, right? <laughs> slash search, right? So, this is maybe the food, right? Food slash search, right? Then, in your uh, Java uh, web service class, RESTful class, there you accept some of the parameters. 
uh, to to for you to construct the select uh, queries uh, SQL statement. So it's up to you how you going go, go, going to design the URI. But it, you have to design the URI. So what kind of URI you want to expose to the user, right? Because this is this, right? Uh, so are they following something called uh, use the noun to to use for URI, all right? Or they, I don't know whether this search is, is a verb, but it's not over here. So this part I'm not very sure, right? So as a as a guideline, the resource or word URL, this URL should be should be used as a noun instead of verb. This information about a request receives a GET request, and it shows where it was sent and what parameters we passed in. Yeah. Uh, one of the parameters that we didn't set was the access token because that was automatically set by the Apigee uh, interface. And then below that, in sort of the blue and purple, you have key value pairs of headers that we sent as part of our request. Yeah, so the key key value pair uh, appear uh, so in the query, query string, right? So that so in your web service class, you can take the keys to take a look what is the value provided by the user in the query, right? Key key value pair. All right. So in this case, they say in the search, it's latitude equal to what, uh, uh, longitude equal to what, right? Kind of, kind of things, right? So these are the parameters. Uh, key value pair, uh, key value pair. Yeah. Yeah, so. And then if you look over at the response, you can see we got an HTTP status code of 200, which means success, that everything went okay. And then there's some header information as well. We've got uh, X rate limit limit, which is 5,000, which is the total number of requests you can make to the Instagram API using one access token during one rate limit period. And then down below you can see X rate limit remaining, which is uh, 4,994, which is... So it looks like uh, in the HTTP header, right? HTTP header. So some of the header we are very clear. So the date, when the response is sent to the client, what's the weather date, when it will expire, whether, what's cookie, what's set how to the client side. So the, these are the predefined set of the, the, the fields. Key is a key value, key value, right? So, so, so HTTP all allow us to create our so-called, our own kind of header and uh, value things, right? So, to create, so for, uh, you, you can create your own header, right? So in the case of your request, you can have your own header, right? How many requests we have remaining in this rate limit window? Yeah, I think. And then there's some information. We have time, uh, so you can take a look uh, at these things. So our focus in our assignment basically focus on one method, right? For get. So in the practical notes, uh, we have some sample over there for for post, for delete, for options, right? So uh, you can modify and then do your stuff. So what is the plan for today, right? So this is basically a warm-up, uh, kind of revision, right? So what I'm going to do is to do this, right? Uh, so we are assuming uh, we are on the, uh, everybody is on the right page to have, go to this URL, right? So yours could be similar, could be different, it doesn't matter. So we come here, uh, we will be able to uh, get this. Uh, similarly, when you go to SOAP UI, you will be able to see this, right? So the document I prepared for today is uh, over here, the assignment two. So uh, at this stage, uh, after we finish step one, so our milestone is uh, more or less is like this. Uh, so you go to URL, uh, your web service will be able to connect to the database, uh, set the query to the database, to select all the tools. And then this result set will put into, into a JSON format. Yeah. So this is a milestone, right? So uh, in the assignment page, I haven't received any uh, questions so far. So, uh, so I think it should be okay, right? So now what we are going to do is do one step uh, further, or move to this uh, step two, end-to-end uh, -end starting at the mobile. It's up to you, end-to-end, -end you start at the as uh, a uh, service side or start as a database side, right? So it doesn't matter. So on my uh, side, I've already uh, start XMPP. Uh, uh, I don't want to, 
uh, as an trader, I don't want to change my database. I, so I just start my SQL and I never start the Apache because I don't need the console to manage my SQL. I just start the, my SQL server. And in the Eclipse, is it, uh, I start the, the Glassfish, the start already. Uh, so I have published the web service, uh, so that's why you can see over here when a request comes to this resource, right? Uh, so yours could be similar, could be different uh, uh, from this URI, so this is the thing, right? So now, <coughs> what we are going to do is, for today, is very simple. So we start an Android uh, application, right? Android application. So when I, uh, only one activity uh, in this case. So when I say get tools, right, we'll send a HTTP request to this URR, URI, URL, URI, right? And then I, what I retrieve is uh, name is a string. So I just display it, let me see over here. Very fast actually, right? So this is a first step, right? First step. First step. The second step uh, is to, uh, because this JSON string kind of communicates successfully with another application over there, uh, but you, if we want to display it in the list view, Right, so there, this is a second activity. So today I'm going to focus on the first activity, only one activity. So the rest of the things uh, you can do by yourself. If you have more time, then I move on to the second activity. So the first activity. Yeah, so you just sit back. Uh, I will use these notes uh, I prepared uh, for you. So this is the stuff I just show you, and then this is the uh, JSON string. So this JSON string look, look like this is the first one. Uh, first, so you, because you we are we, you you build this web service just for service yourself, so you know the, where this data come from. Right from the database, there's one table. So this refers to the first record, right? First record, the price, the ID, uh, two name. Uh, so in your case, should it be the food, food ID, food name, or food whatever you choose, which you think is relevant to the user. Uh, this is second record and third record. So I just pick up three records, so the rest I just put a square bracket. So there's a square bracket over here, so it means over here is a JSON array. So this square bracket over here is a JSON array. So you double check, when you come to browser, you, you, you notice if there is a square bracket in your case. So in my case, there is a square bracket. So I know this is a JSON array. So this is the first element in the array, and so, 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 so forth, right? So in the first activity, we don't care all of this, because we, once we get this from Android, uh, we send HTTP request to this URI, uh, once we get this back, we display as it is. Right, so, uh, but later on when you come to want to display in the list view, right, so you will come, in your back end, right, your web, your, this JSON string is come from the object, <laughs> right, <laughs> two object, right, <laughs> right, or array of the uh, two object, right. So now the string, when you receive the string, come to your mobile phone, you work for your mobile device, your mobile program, right? In the end, you must convert this string to the, to the object, right? Or array of objects, so that you can say, blah, 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 right? And then you, so there's a parsing over there, you, which is, you, we need to do in the activity two, right? We will see how. Okay, never mind, we will expect to receive this. So what we are going to do is, so I just mentioned about uh, this, uh, a square bracket and a curly bracket. Yeah, so we have a, this is an array, and they contain this uh, array, right? So this is some explanation. So this refer to JSON object. This is JSON array, right? So 
I copy paste somewhere. Uh, very good explanation. Uh, all right. So <coughs> then, because in the uh, HTTP, the mobile client, right? You need to you want to send HTTP request uh, to the web service at the, in this case local host. So uh, the best the best uh, practice is to uh, check the connection first before we proceed to uh, instantiate the HTTP request object and then we start to try to link, link establish connection with the service that is URI. So the good practice is to check the connection. Yeah, so this is a segment of code I copy from Google Developer, right? So the style is very, very nice. We have, a, we have this kind of things, what to do, what return, right? Uh, we're documented. Right? It's device online, so they have this connective manager, and then they will, they will return if uh, the device is connected or not. Return. So this is the first thing we need to do. You want to check this uh, resource, so in your uh, uh, manifest, you need to set this permission, right? Uh, this tag, use permission, right? Uh, so the first one is permission for the internet. The second one is access network state. Uh, so over here, you will be able to check the state. Right? So once you put this code, you will know. Uh, the, if you don't put this, if, if you don't change the manifest, you may have error. Right. So, so you look at the manifest. So we have a couple of things over here: uh, internet permission, and then this uh, network state to be set. Right. So I, I highlight it in the document. You will know you, because when you compile, when you run, they will have error over there. Uh, it's a runtime error. Compiling, they don't. They will not complain. Is when you run this code, piece of code, all right? It's kind of we don't have permission to access this resource, so uh, you will know. Right? So I just put together. So yeah. Okay. Now we are going to use HTTP client. So our uh, previously in the case study, we have tried a couple of HTTP client to connect to sub service global temperature conversion. Uh, in the term break, I pass to you to consume our own credit card uh, validation service, right? So if there's a document I, I sent to you earlier. So we, we have used uh, different types of uh, HTTP. HTTP, sorry, HTTP client. Yeah, HTTP client. So this is a paragraph I got from MIT. Right? So they have a page on Android developed from MIT. So they say uh, building HTTP clients, uh, one is HTTP URL connection, another one is HTTP client. Uh, they both support HTTPS, uh, streaming, all of the things, IPv6, connection pooling, so all of the things over there. So for them, they recommend your HTTP URL connection. Right? So, and then, uh, recently, when I look at this, right, so the kind of, we, in this tutorial, we are using this uh, asynchronous uh, HTTP client, which is based on HTTP client, right, so uh, we're running a different thread. So, in other words, uh, over here, you will have a main thread to, for the user to interact, right, so this is the main thread. Uh, main thread, because they have only one activity, so this main thread refer to this activity. So whenever you call the interact with this backend, this things, right? So they were doing another thread. So this is uh, the two thread. That means these two thread are working together, right? Are running together. So one will not block another, right? So alternatively, you can call over here. Right, and then wait for the re uh, send a request to the service at the end. So this will be blo blocking the UI thread, a uh, UI thread, right? U UI thread. Right? So uh, when blocking the UI thread, you know there might be two problems. One is you you block the user from interaction with uh, with uh, the activity, and then for the main activity, it seems that the Android operating system they have 
uh, consider a time out for the main chat, how much time they can run it over there. So if you run out of time, then they will stop with killing this chat. Right? So, uh, so this is a multi chat application. So we are going to use this uh, HTTP client. Uh, so these are the things from MIT. They talk about different type of clients, uh, right? So when we talk about uh, multi-thread, right? So in the HTTP client, we are using we are using so-called asynchronous HTTP client, right? Asynchronous HTTP client, right? So in, instead of you, when I issue the request for the service, right? So at the end, this guy, uh, you don't call me, right? It's kind of I will call you back. So this. I'm this thread, HTTP client, to invoke this web service at this URI to get the JSON back. So whenever I call the result, uh, can I call you back? <laughs> so don't ask me, right? Don't say, hey, Mr. G, have you got the result yet, right? I say, you wait, right? Now sometimes, you, you call me again, right? Hey, have you got the result? I say, wait, wait, I call you back, right? I will call you back, right? So, of course, you are not. Uh, you are so also smart. On your side, you may set a timeout or whatever things, right? To see how. So uh, over here. So well, I will call you back. So the mechanisms. Uh, I see this picture is a very good pic picture uh, to illustrate the code, the coding. Right. So the coding. Uh, not so. so uh, in order to use this uh, asynchronous uh, asynchronous HTTP client. This guy is come from the library, right? So this library need to be added to this grader, right? So, uh, so these are the uh, instructions over there. Right? So this, uh, I think this is the wrong, right? So just put over here. Alternatively, you can download the, download the library and put it in your lib directory. Right? But the thing is, if I copy this project to you, if, because in, in the library I downloaded it, let's say in my C drive uh, somewhere, right? So this link to C drive. So when I copy this, uh, when you on your computer, right? You don't have, you may have this library, but your library may not be in the same directory as my project. So end up your project may not work, right? So Gradle come to the picture. Okay, you need this. Uh, they just have this. Uh, yeah, I I will interpret this guy as a URI, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> this is a resource, right? <laughs> this is a re resource. Whenever you compile, you need this library. They will grab the resource from this URI, to, which is uh, the loopj uh, kind of asynchronous client library. Yeah, so we put it here. And then you do some synchronized synchronization. I think somewhere uh, sort of says, right? And then they will grab the the library for you and compile the, the stuff. So manage the dependency for us, right? Uh, so it's good for teamwork, right? pass the project around right? for sharing purpose. Right? <laughs> so these are the instruction. And then uh, we are not using the latest 1.49, uh, which we can find, because this is the lesson I learned from the Glassfish, uh, uh, this 4.11, right? So uh, it kills me many, many hours, right? <laughs> so I learned this, so I put it here, I say, well, you, if we go to this website, the latest version is 1.49, right? so we are using 1.44, right? So that's all. Okay? Now, the coding for this uh, activity, now we have the library with us, uh, we print the Gradle, and then we import this library, HTTP does something. Now we can use this uh, uh, asynchronous HTTP client. Our objective is to similarly similar to this uh, to this guy, right? Similar to this browser hit. <laughs> and then in this case, the browser prepared the HTTP request on our behalf and, and to request this resource at this play over here. So now it seems that we have to do something by ourselves with the help of this H asynchronous HTTP client, right? Asynchronous HTTP client. So we have this with us. So we instantiate this uh, asynchronous HTTP client from this library. So we manage to have this object client, right? 
then uh, just bear in mind this we are using this to construct a HTTP request to that resource, right? So when you say client of the get, so basically you are telling this client the HTTP method is get, right? Uh, HTTP method is get. So you can say get from Google and then uh, and then this the second parameter is from here until all the way to to uh, I think is here. This is the second parameter. The second parameter, right? The second parameter is call you back. So when you see this, right? Essentially, this make a call. After they receive this guy, they will call you back. So when you call you back, you have to have uh, this uh, function over there to handle this, right? So when you call me back, so this is a function called asynchronous HTTP response handler. So over here, in your main chat, over here you need to have a handler. If we don't have a handler, how can I call you back? Hello? You are busy, your main chat are busy with something, user interaction services, right? So you must tell me the handler so that I can call you back. So we define the handler over here, right? So where, 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 where is it? Yeah, define the handler, asynchronous handler. So on start, if I'm success, what I'm going to do, if I'm failure, what to, to, to do, I will retry what I'm going to do, right? So let's move on to the main code, right? So uh, this is a function called invoke. This is a documentation I got from the asynchronous HTTP client. So this is a code we are using over here, right? So we are going to call the web service in this chat using the asynchronous HTTP client. So we are going to call, right? So uh, we set a timeout over there, right? So if we don't set, it's okay. Uh, if we don't set, it's fine. Why? Because this client object got a default properties over there. So, but you, uh, you, you, but sometimes this default default value could be very very dangerous. Uh, so, uh, could be very very dangerous. So, you, we, we we need to test it out to see what time up we need to set. In other words, this asynchronous HTTP client running in this thread, calling the web service at this URL in order to get the JSON. What if? No response, right? Connection cannot open. You are waiting over here. So you set a timeout over here. After the timeout, you still cannot successfully establish the connection with the web service. In this case, REST for service. What are you going to do? What this HTTP, asynchronous HTTP client is going to do? Give an error, right? Uh, before give an error, is there anything else we, we can do? We try it, huh? Let's retry. So this what we said. You can see how many times you 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 are, you are going to retry, right? So we say three times or so four times is up to you, right? So you you cannot put too many, right? That not make sense. But there is a one minor issue over here. Is uh, I think for uh, those people with uh, some background in other discipline, you will know. If I call you, right? You're not successful. Uh, you never give me JSON or never give me any re response, right? So I know something wrong. Time out. I know. So I retract. So basically, the the simple practice is you don't retry immediately. What does that mean? I call you, right? We wait for three seconds, right? No reply were ready, right? So I, I'm going to retry, but the practice over here is before I retry, I need to wait, right? So uh, the, over here, no, no, uh, no need to rush, right? <laughs> no need to rush because if you rush, it really does not make sense. If I call you, right, and then immediately you call, you, I call you again. Uh, this retry very likely cannot be successful. Right. I don't know whether it's a common sense in our 
everyday practice. <laughs> For example, you call me, I, I'm in the toilet. Right? So you call me again. You try three times, right? I, I don't think you can successful, right? So in between, you, you, you need to have a break. Right? So this is very interesting. See? We try three times, right? And then the delay between the retry, for example, we, I put in one second. Yeah? One second. <coughs> one second. So for those with uh, engineering background, right, you will know when I call you, right, over here, uh, at this time, I call you. So I will not call you immediately. I will have a delay before I retry again, right? So why we should not retry immediately, right? So basically, let's say, for, for example, uh, when I call you, there is a noise over here, right, for example. Lightning, thundering, or some, someone the drilling, the machine, all of this. So the kind of noise. Right? So there's the one type of noise which is, can be overcome by retry is this noise. Vroom, like very sharp, like wave, and then disappear. So if you don't delay, if you retry immediately without delay, very likely you are within this window of the noise. The noise has not disappear yet, right? So, there is a, yeah, uh, there is a, uh, need a delay, right? Delay over here, yeah, so. Right. Uh, and then you can add the header, right? Override this header, so accept the right? application slash JSON. So if you don't put there, probably is default is application JSON also, right? Application JSON. So these are the things you need to set up, right? So now, I will call you back. Right? So what is this handler when I call you back? Right? I create a handler, asynchronous HTTP response handler. So when the response I have received all of the things, I will call you back. So you see asynchronous GP clients working in this chat. Your main activity is working in this chat. So I will call you back. So your main activity you need to specify uh, uh, what they call? Uh, where, where is this? Uh, yeah, re response handler. I will call you back. Yeah, call you back. So you said, if I'm um, success, what are you going to do? If I'm uh, failure, what are you going to do? Right? So if on um, success, we override this, right? You notice on um, success, they will tell us uh, the status code, right? So in this case, status code, I think is uh, what? 400, 200, <laughs> 200, right? Is it? Yeah. And then the response itself is put in the 0, 1, 1, 0, array of bytes. So in other words, once the response comes back, uh, they call back this function, handler, right? What we see is not the JSON string yet. It's an array of bytes. So we, we convert this array of bytes to a string, right, to the string, so, uh, to the string, so what they are going to do is to, um, response, right, new string, response body, this byte, array of byte, byte array, then it will become a string, right. So in a new activity, uh, there is a text view called output, right, output, output set text, then response. Put the response tree and display over there. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so what again? So that's a that's a piece of code, right? So on failure, they have a couple of things for you to to show the failure, right? The fa the failure. So let me stop the stop the glass fish. Uh, so in this case, they should be able should we they should not be able to to connect, right? So. Uh, please wait, please wait. They time out, right? So there's error. Device might not, might, might not be a, a uh, some, 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 some error, right? Put in this first, so I'll try again, right? So between, behind the scene, they have already retried three times uh, kind of things already, right? So if you're successful, then they will be able to, uh, to do this. So let me start this again, right? Okay, so. So let me jump a little bit to the, 
Yeah, so they display this rotate over here, uh, put the string over here, right? So this is a complete code for this activity, only one single activity, right? Uh, because uh, th I, when I prepare this, I, I think this is things uh, we, uh, we get everybody on the same page. Uh, then you can move on from this single activity, right? So there's one thing we need to highlight is when we call this from this guy, right, this guy, this virtual, this emulator is running in virtual machine, right? And this glass fish, everything is running on this physical machine. So basically these are the two, two machines, right? Two machines over there, right? So what that does mean is, <coughs> when we connect to this, over here in the browser, because the browser is running the same machine as this guy. So it makes sense when we set the URL, say localhost, right? However, when we come to another virtual machine, now it's emulator, when you say URI localhost, right? So they will look for the resource in, the, in this localhost, in this virtual machine, right? this virtual machine. So let me bring you to the complete code over here, right? So this I got from this uh, example. I modified it a bit only for the display this. So what we are going to do is, uh, you see the, if you compare the URI, the, there is uh, context, path, path, and here come to this guy, right? So it's the same. The only difference, phone number is the same. The only difference is this, this is the one, 10.0.2.2, right? So in other words, when we come over here, when we connect to this, 10.222, uh, they were, they were how, don't know how, what did they happen? They will go to this physical machine, on this logo host, uh, for the resource over there, okay? So we cannot use localhost, cannot use 127.0.1 because it's the same thing. Localhost 127.0.1. These are all loopback things. Loopback means we, are, we request and then we, the, hey, where is the loopback? Ah, uh, loopback. Loop right? So we will not go outside. We the same virtual machine. Uh, same machine, same virtual machine, the same thing. However, this guy, right, the localhost is not the localhost uh, where the in other words, the URI over here is not located at this local host for the virtual machine, right? So the, this is the things we need to change, and then I, this is the text view we are output over there, right? So this is the Y activity. I think I just uh, there's a progress bar also, right? Please wait, and then uh, just wait, right? So there's a. Yeah, so this is the code. Uh, this is uh, just now invoke this uh, we, we are talking about, right? So uh, invoke this right? You sometimes you need to pass parameters uh, to the web service. So uh, I put two. One is invoke this without only with string URL without pr parameters, right? If in your assignment you need parameters, then you can call this method, right? for this method, uh, invoke WS, so everything will be fine, one activity only. So this is the layout uh, for this uh, stuff, right? Uh, so you know in, the, in, the, in, the, in this module, the end of the semester test, they will test about uh, XML, <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> so if you understand this XML, right, <laughs> right. so I think any test you, you, can, you, can, you, you know how to answer, right? So for the revision, uh, pay attention to stateless, HTTP stateless. Never, the server side never keep track of the states of the client request. So in the case for RESTful service. The RESTful service you are doing, uh, you, you, is every, every request is a fresh request. We not, I never keep track of the previous request status. I make this server side very lightweight, all right? Light, light, uh, lightweight. So an XML will be tested also. Yeah, so uh, this is the stuff, 
Right. So, yeah. So we are going to take a short break. Uh, so when we come back, I will move on to uh, this page. So basically, what we are going to do next is, since in this activity we work with this uh, JSON string already, so when the user click, in my case, click this button, right, I will pass this data, pass this data, it's just a string, right? I will pass this data to another activity, right, another activity, right? Uh, so you, you know you will use intent, and uh, then you can put the extra things, right? This data will extra, and pass to another activity. So uh, we will come back, and then the JSON passing a little bit, right? So we'll come back to we'll discuss uh, this part. Uh, what is this part? Let me highlight to you. When we come back, we will take a look. So in this main activity, we have done this already. Uh, we, we use two threads. One is main thread, right? Another thread is asynchronous HTTP client to invoke the web service. And finally, we got the JSON string from the web service, which is just a string. So now, what we are going to do, we are going to uh, display this JSON in a readable, human-readable format. So what we need to do, we need to pass the JSON string, right, uh, to this new, another activity too. Uh, so last time we talked about activity, different activities, how to communicate with each other in Android, basically in tech, we'll put the things uh, the JSON string in a bundle, right? And then this guy, activity 2, will be able to get the string from this bundle, right? From this bundle. So and then the rest is to display already. So when we come back, we'll look at the next part of this uh, demo. Yeah. So for those who have already completed a swing application uh, consuming the web service, I think it's fine, right? So what's okay, right? Uh, uh, for those who have not complete, uh, you can straight away uh, use uh, mobile. And uh, I talked to Justin, he said, either you can create, consume external third-party web service or consume your own web, web service, right? So I, I think with this demo, I think uh, there's some, something I can help you to move one step ahead, right, to modify some code, and then, uh, right, so you have a choice what you want to do.
So for me, uh, when I prepare this journey right, until now, uh, I, I think I spent about 20, 30 hours again. <laughs> so the problem I face is, uh, you remember the, the, when I talk about assignment, I show you a demo, uh, where is the angel, I can consume the external response service. Right? However, I use the same piece of code when I access a local web service. The spinning, spinning, spinning never stopped. <laughs> I don't know where, uh, what happened, right? So, because I think this should be very fast. One, one click, I get it done. I have all the changes about the local host to the IP address, debugging, so I cannot find the problem. So, and then I start from scratch again. I use another HTTP client, right? Uh, in this case, asynchronous HTTP client, but just start from, from scratch. And then uh, do again, right? so it seems work working. So for, uh, because of this, uh, so I will not pass you the whole project. Uh, I want you to do it from scratch, and then you know where it can go wrong. Because this is only one activity, right? So you start any Android project and then add a blank, uh, whatever template you choose, blank activity or empty blank activity, whatever is there, you override all the coding with the code we provided over here. So, uh, yes, this download button has not been activated. Uh, so, uh, even though I put it in over here, right, uh, so because I customized from other tutorials, uh, so this is something, uh, uh, list of tools, right, so uh, contains information so your hard copy has not changed so in your case uh, is a uh, food list of food right so the source code uh, you just create project and they uh, add one activity by default they work got a main activity you just call main activity and then uh, the complete source code right uh, is over here so these are the explanation what are the procedures so this is the result so the complete code is from here. So the package may be different in your case. I think the rest you can copy paste to the to the to the main activity class, right? Main activity class, right? From all the way, and then the manifest, right, uh, is over here, right? Yeah. So if you look at the, the source code, right, we don't, we don't have the place to reach the, uh, the button click event and a button event handler, so, it's, so instead we link over here in the manifest. So one of the button, uh, for example, this button uh, called something, uh, view, uh, no, in this case, no view, get tools, uh, once on click, they will call the function called get tools. Uh, get tools. So, uh, so it's, uh, maybe it's different from your your another module. So this is the things uh, you need to highlight you uh, already there. So just two files, right? Then in your project, because you are using this library, so in the Gradle, you put this dependency in the Gradle, so they will track this library for you. So this only thing you need to to, 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 to change and add on to the project, right? That's all this line. And then the rest, I think, in my case, is called display JSON, right? So your case could be main activity. All right, so now let's, uh, when you come here, you, I think uh, for this assignment, you feel very comfortable. For the mobile part, you should also feel very comfortable when we reach this stage. Right. Now, I reach this stage. So now we move one more step to, to show this part. When you click view, so they will come to another activity. Right. right. So uh, what happened is for this guy, uh, at this activity, let's, let's in your case probably the main activity, they already got the JSON string. So when the user click this button, move to another activity, so they will pass this string to another acti act activity, this JSON string. 
so that this activity will be able to uh, pass the JSON and uh, display it to the user. Right? So there are two tasks over there. Uh, first is how to pass this JSON string from this activity to the next activity. Right? The second, once the next activity receives this JSON string, how to put it back to the array of objects, in this, in this case, array of tools. So your assignment is array of kind of food, right? Uh, so with two tasks uh, we need to do uh, in the next activity, right? So let's move on, right? So <coughs> this uh, code, uh, we just leave it, right? Uh, yeah. So this activity uh, have two thread. One is main thread, right? Another thread is asynchronous client to interact with the web service. And after that, they call back this main thread. And the main thread on success display the JSON stream over here, set up already. Now the user click another button, move to this guy, right? So we need to pass this JSON stream uh, using intent. And associated with intent, you can put extras in a bundle. Yeah, that means the JSON string you can put over here. Right? So let's take a look at the code, uh, how it works. Right? So when the user click uh, this uh, view button, this click, right? it is still on the main activity. Right? Uh, you click this, on click. So what we are going to do is, uh, this is a kind of funny thing I put it, you, you don't care, right? <laughs> so, so I see the button, <laughs> I want to check uh, this button, the value is view, right? Get a text to see whether it's view, right? So <laughs> you, you don't have to put this, right? So it's just uh, kind of uh, <laughs> play around with this, 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 this part. So now, so we'll create an intent, new intent, right? New intent, so over here, this new intent constructor, right, they accept uh, two parameters. So this refer to this. This means this, right? Because this piece of code is running in this main activity, so it means this. So uh, are they, the second parameter is that, is another activity, right? In, in my case, another activity called list two activity. List two activity. Right, list two activity. So I have a list two activity over here. Right, so this is a list two activity. So when we click the intent, uh, we have the two parameters uh, from this activity to this list two activity. So, okay, now we have this intent already. Next, when we move to next uh, this uh, activity, we need to pass the JSON string. So what do we put it? We put it extra is a so-called bundle, right? Uh, this response, this response is what we see previously displayed the JSON string on the text output. The re you remember the response, right? We get the uh, byte array, and then we put the set the text over here. Response. So this is a response, JSON string, right? So in the bundle, what we are going to do is, we put the JSON string in a bundle, right? But, uh, put the JSON string in a bundle. It's called put extras, right? But we cannot just put uh, the response over here, right? We must also put a key over here, the key, right? So you give a name to it. So this second parameter is JSON string. The first parameter is a key, right? Just you give any name, right? Will do. Uh, so that when we move to the another activity, uh, they will be able to get the string from the bundle based on the key, right? So you set the key. So in my case, I just say, uh, I say JSON. Is it JSON string or JSON, right? So two parameters. Uh, this second parameter is the JSON string. I need to pass to this activity, and then I give a key to this string, right, JSON, okay? So, 
Alright, so this is the uh, main activity. So when we move on to activity two, right, when activity two is created, on create events, oh, then you will uh, get the intent. Then you know the intent called the this bundle, so you get extras. We check if anything in this bundle, right, yes or no, I say equals to null, they return. If it's not equal to null, then we get the response based on the key. The key is called JSON. Right? So back to this picture, I think it's the same thing. Get the string, the key is called JSON. So in this main activity, we put the response over here, we put the key, you name the key, right? We call JSON, okay? Key value, key value pair, key value pair, right? Key value pair. So uh, this is how it works, right? So at this stage, if activity two, just say, oh, I, oh, I got the JSON string also. <laughs> you, activity one, you uh, work very hard using asynchronous client, uh, call the web service, and this URI, you got a zero string, and then you pass to this activity. Oh, no, I also got a string, right? <laughs> right? So over here, already, right? Also got this string. Uh, and then I say, I display my text, uh, text view, set the text, right? <laughs> and then no value add, right? You already display already, so I have to add some value to it. So display in the uh, so-called uh, uh, list view, right? List view. So the list view <coughs> display. So this guy, so you, if you look at this code, let me come to you. Manifest for this guy. Sorry, uh, this color is like this. So, uh, the manifest, right, all, all of the things, they only contain the list view. Only contain the list view to list the items one by one. Right? So, let me... Uh, so, the list, list view. So this is uh, item one, item two, item three, item four, right? So this is the uh, scenario. Okay. So now, as I said, before using list view, right, display the things in the list view, what we need to do is we need to, uh, we are here already, activity, uh, so we pass the result already, we call it the string, JSON string, the activity two already. So the JSON string, right, need to put into a array list. Because this is just a string, we must convert back to the array of objects. Yeah, so this kind of thing is very boring. So you remember in you know, a web service, right, you connect into the uh, MySQL, you got the data in the result set, and then after that you put it in the array of tools, right? <laughs> and then in the end, you put, put to the JSON string, pass back to me. So once I get the JSON string, right, I have to pass back to array of objects. <laughs> you see, this is kind of a funny thing, right? So it's, it's like that. Because you, you need to pass a string so that this data can be transferred to the HTTP. You cannot transfer the all, all object, right? You can only string. But this is a kind of structured string. They have some things, a key value pair or whatever things. So they make it possible this string once you receive you will be able to convert this JSON string to JSON object so we will get an array of objects of tools from the JSON string right so it's kind of reverse so technically what you are doing is on your side you, what you did before you send this string to me from the object is called serialization. <laughs> Pass back to me. <laughs> so for me, the activity two, after I got this string response over here, right, I need to do deserialization. In other words, convert back to the array of objects. You know, before we can show it in the list view. Of course, you see, I just display a uh, string, right? So we have done this already, right? <laughs> in the text view, step text already, right? So uh, this is something we need to do, yeah? So, uh, pass up, <coughs> get some passing, yeah? So now the next step, task is called passing the raw data JSON string, which we have already got over here in the response. 
So what they did, right? So they have a array list, JSON array, right? So uh, let me move to the on create, right? So just now we say on create, we have already uh, managed get the things from the bundle, and then this is JSON string store in this uh, variable already. So in this variable already. And in this activity, I just show you they have a list view over there, a list view, yeah, list view. But you can, at this stage, you cannot take display talk to list view already because you haven't put the JSON string to the array of uh, objects yet, right? So we need to do this. So the job is called parsing the JSON string, right? So uh, this, this, this is how uh, JSON array, you have a tools, uh, right? Let's put array over here. And this is an array list called two list. So you have two, two list, whatever it is. So uh, what we are going to do is uh, JSON array response, right? So why we are using JSON array? Because I, I show you in the first place, uh, this guy starts with a square bracket. Square bracket. The square bracket is a JSON array. It's an array, right? So you need, you use this uh, JSON array uh, to start this object. Right, so this, <coughs> this is a JSON string, right? Pass the JSON string to JSON array, then they have a JSON array already. Tools. The tools contain is a array, array of these tools, right? So, and uh, there's something, uh, this is for testing. So you have a tools, array of tools already, right? Array. So uh, if I get this JSON object zero, means I get the first two, right? First two. I get the first two. So uh, let's say among all of this, this is two zero, two one, two. So I got two two zero. Uh, get the first object from this JSON array, right? Object zero, for example. And then I just once I got this zero, so first I got the price. So what is inside this object is, right, contain this first one, the, the price, the ID description for the first two. So when I say price, then they will display price, right, uh, so, 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 and then I toast. Uh, kind of thing, right? So this is just for testing, for you to understand what we put in the JSON array, what, what is inside the tools. So this is redundant code. Right, so the, the rest, right, so tools basically contain array, uh, JSON array, uh, object, so one, two, three, we use a for loop uh, to see how long this uh, tools.length, tools.length means how many tools contain this array, right, and then we convert to the JSON object, yeah, JSON object. So the first object, we get the price, get the true ID, get the true name, all right, yeah. And then uh, create the object, create the object, right? Create the object. So put it in the object, and after that, put it in the array to list. Add this tool to the list. So in the end, we have a uh, array list of tools. Yeah. So array list of tools. Maybe I pause for a while. I do some something. So this display JSON, right? So let's say I move to the another activity over here. Uh, so on create event, right? So we get the response first. Uh, we get the response and pass to JSON array to put a, in the tools array, right? So this is things we are going to do, right? right. So last time, uh, uh, let's say I hold some conversation among students, for example, in the Android, sometimes we click the button and then nothing happens, right? <laughs> because you don't, don't know what is going on, right? Uh, so uh, uh, normally, uh, uh, different people with different approach. So alternatively, say, for example, I point my mouse over here. I want to check from the first activity, they call the web service, call the JSON stream. Then they use intent, put the bundle, and pass back to me in the response. So I want to check whether I have received this 
JSON string from the previous activity. So what I did, I come to this second activity, and then over here, I just kind of double click, click, double click, right over here. Then, right, so I move on to this guy, which is the first one. Um, in your case, will be the main activity. And then uh, you can choose to, instead of run it, you can choose to back this uh, display JSON. Sometimes uh, when I'm testing this, uh, the, my glass fish is running the Eclipse, and XMPP, I run in the MySQL, and then I run Android, and then the emulator is running. And then it seems that the emulator consumes a lot of memory space. Uh, they uh, kind of, uh, sometimes you don't know where the error comes from, so it kind of, uh, uh, and then the system can get very slow also, right? So uh, let me check is is it working? Yeah, it's working. Uh, not really. <laughs> try the stuff. So instead of I run it, I do the debugging. So they can pause at this break point. So you can examine what is happening here and there. Right? Sometimes a lock cat can give, give us some uh, error message, something uh, useful also. Yeah, alternatively is to do this. Let me stop first. Stop. So this guy is still there. So currently when we use this uh, emulator, uh, I'm using this uh, AVD uh, API and the tree, right? So uh, the running environment, right, the emulator. So when you're testing, maybe you take a note, the emulator, we are using. Mm, I, I I just put on the top right in case this may be an issue. So maybe we are just uh, emulator. We are using this API in the tree, and so this guy is kind of working. There's okay. And then okay. Close. Uh, Is connected from the socket, right? So okay, now my why this guy is connected? Okay, so I get two. Because my breakpoint is setting on the second activity, so does not affect the first activity. So the first activity, the code will run in full swing, right? However, if I click this uh, button in the first activity, right? So they will use the intent together with some information in a bundle 
with a key called JSON, and then the value is a JSON string, right? Will come to us. So when you come here, so you will see they will stop over here, right? And then you can examine uh, what is inside the response. So from the previous activity, we get the response from the bundle over here, get JSON, uh, get JSON, right? <coughs> Uh, get a JSON, uh, where is it? And then uh, you see this from bundle, this string has been passed to us. Right? Because in the, you, you, we are in the debugging mode, so uh, this data value in this uh, extra get string JSON, what is inside extras, what is inside the bundle, uh, right? they were put, they were give to us right? to show you. Now we stop over here, so basically we are going to uh, move it to the JSON array from this JSON string move to the JSON array we call tools so you, you see over here you can step over one by one right so if I want these are the tools contained over there right? many many tools so our, our job is to get the first two in the object right so you will see the first two we will get the two IDs one the price is this so this is the first tools right to the object, and then you can move on, right? So you will see how the program works. Yeah. And then we go through the for loop to the tools and put the value inside the uh, string, right? And then, yeah. So all of this, uh, if you have any problem, so this could be one of the approaches to set a breakpoint, and then you can examine where the code is, is uh, going on. So. Yeah, but some people, they, they don't prefer this, especially the young generation, uh, the, they don't do this. But I think the professional approach, the, uh, the real hardcore program is still uh, using this, right? Okay, so we have a tool list, where we will have a tool list in the end, right? So the for loop will go through several cycles, right? And then add to the tool list, and then continue the for loop, so I think they have many, many things, right? Uh, so in case anything, they will throw the JSON exception and so on. So, so end of the day, uh, we have these two lists with us, the array list. Yeah, we have array list with us. So I, I'm not very sure, i uh, just check with you. So uh, in the mobile Android, right, this module, so we kind of uh, put, I, I, I'll take a look at your practical notes somewhere here and there. So there is some part in array list, right? You use a adapter, and then link to the list view, right? So you have done this. So basically the rest is uh, similar, right? So let me continue with the code. I can stop the debugging now. So the rest <coughs> is to display the two list in the in this, 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 this. But you notice in the two list, right? In the two list so far, uh, in the, <coughs> in the, uh, what is this? Layout, right? We just say list view. We never say in the list view, uh, the first item should be displayed like this, right? We never say. It's just list view. Uh, li just say contain, this is the list view. We never say in each item, how each item will look like will repeat this, right? List view will repeat, right? Depends on how many items. But we never say in the list view what, how every item will look like. Uh, we never say, right? Is it? Uh, correct? Yeah, so uh, let me uh, back to the notes. Uh, I'll, I'll just try to explain the notes a little bit. So you see in the, in the activity uh, over here, what do we put over here in this activity is only list view, right? That's all. It's just list view, right? List view. And then we will use the adapter, right, to link this list view with the array list. Right? Array list. Right. So, so, uh, I copy paste some of the pictures and modify a little bit uh, over here. So we already have an array list already. So we are going to use the adapter to link to the list view. So we'll display this list. 
But so far, we never say in the each new item. Uh, in our case, we will display uh, the price and then two ID. The, uh, display the price in, in the text view. Display the two ID in text view. Display the two name in text view. Uh, this is the first item. They continue with next item and so on and so forth. So this this layout lay, this layout is missing because in the main activity, you just say I contain a list view only, right? So there. Uh, so now we have two parts missing. Uh, we have a list we got from a JSON object a list So we will use adapter to link to this guy, and this list view itself need to indicate to to link to this item view. Right, this layout, we must have this layout to tell this list view in each item they will display like this. Or you can alternatively you say, oh, I put an item price over here, I link up, uh, push up the ID on the left or the right in the same line, and then below is a uh, two name. Right? So you can, this layout you can change, you can design. Right? So let's say our layout for each item Right, is designed like this, right? Then, <clears throat> so what happened is, we say we have a list item, list item layout. It's not activity; it's just a layout, right? So in this layout, we specify uh, this ID is price, which is text view. And then this is text view for two ID display the two ID over here. So it just give a unique ID. And then followed by two name, right? So end up if you look at the layout from design perspective, they will look like this. They will look like this. Right? So now uh, we're ready already. So we have this layout with us. The only layout, right? So it just recalls so basically is to uh, in you don't have to come here to add the new activity, whatever things. Uh, instead, just come to resource and layout, uh, add a new layout to this, and then you can design this layout. Uh, for, for, for example, this is a list item over here. So the design part is like this. I uh, cannot see. Where is it? Yeah, cannot see. Uh, never mind. So text view, uh, another text view. Uh, uh, three text views display <coughs> price ID sort of things. Yeah, so we have this with us already. So your project now. So now what we are going to do is in the list view uh, we have this array already array list through the adapter to link to the list view and uh, this list view uh, this item will link to the item layout, right? So in other words, for each item, uh, the price to ID and the name is, will display this text box, and then one after another. It's not in the same line, was sort of a thing, right? So this, let, maybe we just take a look at the result first, right? So you will see the layout, the first item, based on this layout, price, right? This is the price, followed by ID, and followed by two names, right? So the, the rest, the second, repeat. Third, also re repeat. So this whole thing is list view, and then this uh, list item, right? So this list item is ready. Adapter will link the array list with the li list view. So in other words, the list view will uh, get the data from this adapter to, to display the first item, in, in this case, first two, Two ID, two price, two description, and move. You have a, a array, right? Move the next array, a day, uh, next item. So, so, so uh, I think this is a concept. Uh, once we got a concept, the code I think is uh, straightforward, right? So we create an adapter. So this adapter is this this activity, the first parameter, right? And then this adapter need to link to the array list. Right, array list. So the second parameter is array list. Okay, array list. Array list. <coughs> right. Third parameter, right, is to talk about this layout. 
which you are going to use to display. So the third parameter uh, is come to R. Go to R, right? This R. <laughs> Sometimes in the Android, uh, they will complain the R class is missing. <laughs> so uh, this automatically generated, right? R dot layout dot list item. So they will refer to this guy over here, and then so they will get the. Uh, RID the price, RID the two ID, RID, so there's tree, there are tree over there for each item. And this tree put in the integer array. Right? So in other words, for every item you will uh, display uh, over here uh, this tree uh, integer integer array, right? Refer to in the layout, R dot ID price, uh, R dot ID two ID <laughs> R dot ID to name, right? So this, uh, in a way, we link up to the list item already. Uh, list to the uh, item already, right? Right? So this guy is the constant we define on the top. Right to show what are the things in the two. You see, when you put a two, you have a uh, two price, uh, price, two ID, two name over here. So you will get the this from array, this tree, right? So this second of code, I think, uh, is uh, I hope with this picture, right? Uh, so this is clear. Yeah. So maybe this quick picture should link to this part, but uh, anyway, because uh, I think it's too easy to, to see, it just I put it in this way. So, uh, but this is the third parameter actually we need to put to the adapter, tell the adapter how it works. Everything is under the adapter, right? <coughs> okay. So with this, uh, we managed to come here. Uh, from the previous one, pass the JSON string using intent bundle, then passing the JSON to the array of object, and finally you got the array list, and then use adapter to dis display the list view, and then the first item follow this layout, second item for the same layout, I repeat, right? So. Uh, at, at, at the time when I prepare this, actually I'm thinking whether I have to move one step forward once the user click this guy. So are you going to display some details, some sort of things? So if, if you want to do this, basically is uh, add a listener to this list view object, right? You click there, what are you going to do, right? Maybe display the things in a more uh, big font size or something, right? Or display something else. So this part, I, I think, is for me to stop. Uh, I think, uh, I think it's more or less, is, uh, if you want to choose to move out, then move out. I think if you stay until this stage, uh, I think it's fine also, <coughs> right? Okay, so... Uh, basically, let me move back. We have two milestones. Step one is over here, right? So you should be able to get this from your browser, from your web restful service. Second is to, second milestone is this guy. One activity. Right? Third milestone. But because in, in this demo is assume you have clicked this already before you click this view, okay? Because this view button never call web service, whatever it is. So we are assuming you have clicked this before you can click this, right? So there's a limitation over there. Because this is assuming the character JSON stream from somewhere else already. So this is the third milestone. Then if you have time, you can add a click a listener to the list view item to display a little bit more, right? Um, so, right. So, uh, just now we talk about list view. So, uh, list view in activity basically is just a list view over there. So, for each item, how this each item will look like, you will have a layout to design. So, this will link to the layout, 
right? You get capture, you just say this, this, and then arrange this down, right? So this is a tutorial I put there online. So they are they try to create something similar to WhatsApp. So this is the list view in this activity. That's all. And then for each item, how does it look like? Oh, they want to put something over here. Put the name over here. Where is blocking over here? And put the mobile, the connect over here. So the layout is designed like this. So this is just a list view. So this layout is designed the layout. You see, they put a uh, over here the image view <coughs> in this over here, and I put the this guy text view to display name. Then another text view with this ID to display something, right? Then another text view to display uh, how to con what's the what's the phone? Is this contact mobile or is a work phone? Right? Kind of this. So they display this layout for each item in the list view. Yeah. So this is a tutorial. So, uh, but I think uh, I'm not very sure uh, in the year one when we learn mobile user activity when we come to mobile activity design, right? Uh, I think uh, when we come to the design, I think this is a good practice. Uh, start with a piece of paper, uh, sit down, and no, no, no need to hurry to check and drop. Yeah? So that, that one is for hello world uh, application. I think the, the good practice is to sit down with the team and then you have this kind of piece of paper or use, have, use some design tools to design the UI properly and so on and so forth before we move on to the enjoy to check and drop. Right, so I think this will save a lot of our time and uh, so I just use this as a case study. Right? Uh, because nowadays everybody is hurry, including lecturer, including students, <laughs> including everyone. All right, but uh, uh, hurry, hurry, the end is a loop. <laughs> so, so I, I put step one, uh, step two, step three. So uh, I hope everybody can reach uh, uh, this week, right? This week, I expect everybody. Yeah, get this. Step two, right? And then no, at that time, you know <laughs> everything is with you. It's just how much time, how much, much resource you have uh, before you move further. And then you see your resource, uh, how much you can move, right? So I hope this week. So I wait for any response. Uh, uh, I will. I uh, will communicate with you uh, in the assignment tool, alright, uh, this is I think assignment tool, uh, any of the things uh, when you come to this stage, any questions you encounter, uh, so, so, so forth. Or some of, I, I'm not very sure, some of the students, uh, depends on your work schedule, uh, could it be over here, right, could it be at this stage. So either one, this stage one, stage two, any questions uh, related to this, I, I suggest you to follow the notes I passed you last week and this week closely, uh, get a sample database data set of work, and then you can customize and change, uh, and then you can learn more of, on your own. So any question related to this, uh, this milestone one, and then any question related to this milestone stone two, right? Uh, please put uh, anything you want to share uh, on this page, assignment two. Uh, so, uh, actually today I already start to revision already. Uh, you know uh, the state list will be tested. And I, I can tell you will be tested. Right? Why? Because uh, you must know. <laughs> very simple, right? Very, very simple. Uh, state list put it at uh, pr perspective of HTTP itself, uh, stateless uh, for the RESTful, which make full advantage, take full advantage of the HTTP, right? Uh, build on HTTP, RESTful, also is stateless, right? So, like Ms. G, hey, do you remember last time I asked you a question? <laughs> See? No. <laughs> What's your question now, right? So, it is, everything is fresh, right? They don't hold the status. So for me, it's good. So I don't, the memory space maybe <laughs> uh, consume less than, right? Uh, services. Okay? Yeah, cool. Yeah. So, uh, 
for this until we work until today. Uh, so uh, as a lecture, right, I, I, I'm on the learning path. I'm not very sure uh, I can reach to this stage, show you the demo today, because I encountered some problem also. Right, so I think uh, luckily we we are here, and then you will be there. <laughs> right, right. So and some of our students is in front of me. Right? You have completed the swing, consume the web service. But at that time, the local host no problem, right? Because your swing is running. Okay. So what you did is. IP config and then uh, like that is it IP configuration line. So you are looking at the gateway no, you are looking at the uh, this guy is it as a local host. Mm. Mm. Okay, so you 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 this and some students tell me they are not use emulator, right? Uh, they are not using emulator, maybe use the phone to connect. In this case, the IP address, uh, you need to find out the IP address of the service. Because the URL part, right? Localhost, 127.0.0.1, right? Everything is the IP address, uh, including the emulator, where the IP address uh, we are using is uh, uh, one two something. Uh, for, for call already. Why, why, what is IP address? Because this, when you copy paste uh, this part, you will not encounter this problem, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so I need to highlight to you. Uh, so take note of this. Uh, I think is a previous one, right? So I yeah, put a URL. Yeah, so in this case, it's 10 point uh, sort of things. Uh, okay, so uh, in your case, if you are using IP config, find the real IP address of the uh, host, the serving your, hosting your web service. Uh, the port number, no change, right? The port number is still A0, A0, because port number is referred to, IP address is come to our house, right? Uh, come to this room. So the port number is, because inside this room, inside this uh, room with this particular IP address, we have many services running over there. So the port number is to differentiate uh, services running on the same host, the same IP address. So you find this IP address, for example, a day. So the port number wise referred to your glass fish in, in this case. So our glass fish is still running on port number A0, A0. So this part, uh, I think, uh, is the same, right? But emulator is a virtual machine here. <laughs> Local first does not make sense, right? They will look at the any, any glass fish inside the emulator. <laughs> yeah, uh, inside the emulator. So apparently, uh, no. Right? Uh, there is a missing part over here because we are targeted uh, very much on the assignment we are doing. So what is the missing part? The missing part is using AJAX jQuery in the web application to consume the same building blocks, same URI over here running on your computer. But it's a web application. They're using AJAX jQuery. I think you tried this uh, uh, last semester, right? Ah uh, yeah, so that one also can okay, consume these uh, building blocks, mobile, web, AJAX jQuery, Swing, right? Uh, this now come to the Android kind of things. So kind of you build it once and kind of consumed by different types of clients. And then it's mobile first and uh, client cl cloud first because if you, your web service build in a way can be consumed happily <laughs> by the mobile device which have n limited network resource uh, and in, what is it called? intermittent connectivity limited CPU power in limited battery uh, life or things they are happy to consume your web service so we move to the browser the web application running on your 
uh, laptop, right? Of course they're happy. <laughs> uh, both are happy. Uh, how about your swing? Also happy, swing, swing. We're already, we're already happy already. So there's a reason people uh, in the industry highlight or to build the application, whatever application you make use it, right? Uh, mobile first. Uh, cloud first. Because why cloud first? Because your service may be hosted on the cloud, uh, may tap on the resource on the cloud. Uh, for example, there's an important cloud service for mobile development is notification service. Right? So if I have something, you always pull me, right? <laughs> so I notify you, right? Notification. There's something notification. Like WhatsApp notification, WhatsApp no- notification. Right? So you don't have to really to implement this notification yourself because in the cloud service uh, from Amazon, from Bluemix, from from Google, from Microsoft, IU, they already have the the the, the notification service which you can call API, whatever it is, from your application. So it's like, uh, it's, like, it's like your web service you are creating yourself. This URI happens to be a notification service somewhere, some places, uh, running in the cloud. So you can also plug it. So mobile first, uh, cloud first. Right? Yeah, so with this, uh, I, I wait for any questions come to us. Uh, for these two milestones, because once we reach these two milestones, number one, number two, uh, you are on the right track. You feel comfortable when you, move, you know where to move on, right? Uh, time six. Okay? Yeah. So the rest of the time, uh, I will look around. Uh, any questions related to this, maybe first milestone and anything? Uh, if not, then uh, you can make a move first. Uh, but it's because uh, you deserve to leave earlier because uh, you, you need to spend quite some time uh, on your own. So on my side, I have tried my best to give you some sample to, to highlight some of the problems we may encounter. But you may still encounter some problems, right? So on your own. But, but this is a learning process because if, if copy paste does not work, you, you can customize, you know how you can change. And then this is another way of uh, learning, right? Yeah, and then you can do better than, than I. <laughs> right. <laughs> because you learn too, right? <laughs> Grandma. Yeah, okay, that's all. Thank you very much for today. So the rest, uh, for the Q&A, you can ask about these two milestones. Let's focus on these two milestones. Uh, attendance, you say. Uh, attendance, uh, no, no need to... Oh, sorry, attendance... <laughs> They're recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any questions?